So my conversion has been my daily driver for over a month now and I've racked up uh, over a thousand miles. So I figured I'd give a quick little rundown of all the things I've noticed, uh, what I like, what I don't like, and what I'm looking to change in the future. So starting off inside, you can see uh, that's my trip A counter. I reset that pretty much daily. Trip B is, um, I last reset that before I converted it. Um, so that's all the electric miles I have, about 1100. And now putting it in drive with the switch there. And then this switch to activate the, uh, the inverter. A little screen pops up. Um, this shows speed. The speed is based on a gear ratio that I haven't properly calibrated. It's pretty close to second gear, but I do pretty much all my driving in third gear. Um, so all the distance and everything on here is not really accurate to how far I've actually driven. On the screen, the screen for the inverter, you can see E up here. Uh, if you press and hold this button, it switches between the three levels of regen and some in high. Uh, so I drive around uh, on the roads. I'm always in third gear pretty much and on high regen. Um, so that gives me, you know, getting that kinetic energy back into the batteries uh, instead of just wasting it with braking. But like I said, always driving around in third. Uh, I pretty much only use third, first and reverse. First and reverse, I just use uh, when I'm parking to maneuver into spots. I don't have the motor reverse direction because the gearbox, you know, it's really only designed to move in, in a single direction for each gear. So I don't want to put that reverse uh, load on it. So I found third gear to be a pretty happy medium of acceleration throughout the whole RPM range all the way up to 75, 80 miles an hour. Uh, problem is if I keep it in first, it's really quick off the line up to maybe 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, but then you get basically no acceleration as the motor RPMs are, you know, reaching their their limits. Second gear, similar third gear, I've found to be the best. Uh, fourth and fifth don't really have much of a use because you can just leave the motor at, you know, 4,000 RPM without issue, unlike a typical engine. And I've, of course, gotten a lot of questions about performance numbers, 0 to 60, range, all that. Uh, 0 to 60 and third gear from a dead stop, about 8 to 9 seconds. Um, if I were to shift it, you know, with the clutch and all that, I think I could do 6 or 7 seconds. Not super fast, but plenty fast to keep up with traffic and everything. Uh, and range, I've actually been pleasantly surprised. You know, 50 kilowatts, kilowatt hours of battery capacity. I was expecting, you know, maybe 150 miles of range optimistically, but I'm getting 200 plus probably around 210 uh, with my normal driving, which is really, uh, I think it's pretty impressive. Uh, the one thing I've found that does kill range, though, is high speeds. Uh, this car is not particularly aerodynamic, so at high speeds there's a lot of um, air resistance to overcome. Um, and I'm, if I was going, you know, 75, 80 miles an hour, I don't think I'd get more than 100 or 110 miles of range. But at an average speed of 40 or so, I'm getting that 200 plus. And one last thing inside, um, still don't have power steering, but I've found that it's really a non-issue. I mean, parking can take a little bit of work in tight parking lots, but it's not bad, and I really actually prefer how it handles at speed. Um, it's very precise. You know, the power steering on a lot of these, um, you know, more budget-oriented cars from this era is not, not very precise. It's electric power steering, uh, and there's a reason why people hate on electric power steering. It's not it's not as clean and precise as a hydraulic power st steering system uh, tends to be. So without without any power steering, I really like how it handles. And jumping up front now, you can see the whole front panel looks a little different. Uh, I mounted all this uh, arrow blocking stuff, and this is where the radiator is under here, uh, held in with some magnets. Um, this used to be a vent. Blocked that off, didn't need it anymore. Uh, better for range. This was all where the radiator was radiator and the AC uh, condenser. And this is the charge door here. Uh, so if you pop this open, held in with some magnets, uh, open that up and that's the J7072 charge port. That's how I charge the car. Uh, keeps it pretty pretty watertight. Blocks out any unnecessary airflow into the engine bay. And with the hood open here you can see how all these um, aero blocks also keep it pretty dry in here. Uh, really rainy day earlier today. Uh, driving around a bunch and pretty much no water got in except for you know a little bit right here uh, But that's a non-issue nothing got in the back even though all that stuff's Fairly water resistant still not great to get it all wet, um, but yeah, it's blocking it all out pretty good uh, And then this is the radiator block. I was talking about uh, That's the radiator vent Or radiator grill rather radiator right there 
Uh, works pretty well. This just snaps in with some magnets. Uh, and then I hold it in with a little bungee here so it doesn't slide down. It doesn't doesn't want to slide down, but just in case, you know. So a couple other things I've noticed is one, uh, you might have seen it, noticed it earlier in the videos, there's a big crack in the windshield. And I have no idea how it got there. I just went down one morning uh, to get in the car and it just, it was cracked. Uh, only outer layer, so it's not leaking, but it goes all the way to the edge of the glass, so it'll need to be replaced at some point, you know, I can't really uh, repair that with any kind of filler or anything. Um, but my theory is that it was cracked a little bit at the edge before I bought it, uh, and it just happened to grow one day, as cracks tend to do. And one other thing, um, when you shake the car, simulating going over a bump here, you can kind of hear, I don't know if you can hear that clicking noise, but on the uh, front passenger side, something in this uh, suspension setup clicks going over all kinds of little bumps. I don't know what it is. I, I thought maybe it was something with my mounting with the motor or something at first, um, but I tracked it down to right, right in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. If anyone knows, let me know. Um, feels fine. Suspension feels fine. It's just a kind of an annoying click sound. So yeah, I'm trying to figure that one out. Other than those things, though, car is pretty much done. At this point, it's just a couple of minor things. You know, heat, AC, uh, maybe power steering at some point. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for the regular uploads uh, for this car. I'm going to have some more projects, working with some other EV parts and stuff up, hopefully at some point this winter. Uh, so stay tuned.